Hi, it's Lifeguard Lloyd here. I've been training lifeguards for over 30 years and I've been in the lifeguarding business for over 40 years. Today's lecture is going to cover lifeguard rules. So in an emergency, what is each lifeguard doing? You can download my free supplemental notes at lifeguardtrainer.com, which covers all this material. Let's talk about roles in general, and then I'll add the details as we go along. Role guidelines are just that, guidelines. Guidelines provide a framework of reference. Lifeguards use their skill, knowledge, experience, and fitness and apply it to a situation. Situations do not flow like choreography. Lifeguards need to adapt to complications that arise. The right way may not work, and a creative solution based on previous knowledge and experience needs to be figured out. It's problem solving. Deal with your situation in order of priority. Situations will not always be exactly the way you were trained. Expecting to be trained for every contingency is unrealistic and impractical. The list would be endless. Lifeguards extrapolate using previous experience to create creative solutions to problems. Problem solving gives a lifeguard a certain amount of autonomy, and this is good. Consider as well that lifeguards don't necessarily show up in tandem or one at a time. They might all show up at once, or perhaps two and then more show up. Lifeguards need to quickly decide who is taking on which role. Often, the senior or more experienced lifeguard will take charge when multiple guards show up at the same time. Role shifting or role trading is fine if it makes sense, is logical, and is practical, such as moving a physically stronger person where needed. Role confusion or role abandonment must be avoided. Let's keep it simple. Usually the first lifeguard that engages the situation takes charge. They have the most history. Usually, the second lifeguard that shows up assists the first guard. And usually, the remaining guards that show up control the situation. I do have a previous video detailing majors and minors, but let's add some tasks now to the roles. And we'll apply to a major with three guards. I'll use that model for now. So as you see here, guard one leads the rescue, guard two backs up guard one, and guard three secures the scene. In a three guard minor, guard one leads the rescue, guard two shifts to cover, and guard three takes over any unwatched areas if necessary. Single lifeguard situation still exists. The rescue would be low risk, use an aid, use the ladder approach, ready position if in the water. Remember there is no professional backup. You would delegate your non-critical tasks to bystanders. Those tasks would include EMS, equipment, any assistance you need, and keeping an eye on the pool. So now we'll detail what each lifeguard does specifically. Remember their guidelines. Details on role guidelines can be downloaded at lifeguardtrainer.com from my supplemental notes document. Guard 1 leads the rescue. They recognize the emergency. They initiate the rescue, treatment, or interaction. They communicate or signal. They initiate the pool clear if needed. Often they will initiate the primary assessment. They relay information to the other lifeguards and generally stay with the patient. Guard 2 backs up and assists Guard 1. They also recognize the emergency. They communicate or signal. They'll use the alarms if needed. They'll clear the pool if needed, unless Guard 3 appears to cover, or unless Guard 1 requires immediate assistance. They may initiate the primary assessment, and they exchange information between the other lifeguards. Guard 3 secures and controls the scene. They respond to communications, signals, and alarms. They'll activate alarms if needed. They'll bring needed equipment, such as the first aid kit and the AED, and other rescue gear. They also complete the pool clear unless guard 1 and 2 require immediate assistance. They'll take care of crowd control, they'll exchange information, they'll activate EMS if needed, and may also initiate the primary assessment. If you only have two lifeguards available, guard 2 will combine the functions of guard 2 and 3. If you have more than three lifeguards available, spread out the tasks of guard 3 amongst all available guards. 
Let's apply these principles to a medical emergency and the rule guidelines don't change. Your patient may be in the pool, they may be on the pool deck, they might be in the change room lying on the floor, perhaps in the lobby, in the bathroom, it doesn't matter where they are, the guidelines don't change. The first lifeguard has responded, they will take charge, they will begin the primary assessment and they will communicate for a backup and treat as best as they can while they're waiting. The second lifeguard has responded and they'll immediately assist them back up the first lifeguard. The third lifeguard has responded and they have brought medical equipment and can make an EMS phone call. So as we can see from this example, our guidelines don't change with the changed environment. If you liked what you learned here today, please leave me a like and a comment and we'll see you in the next video.